What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, you can call me JD. And in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the latest colorway of the Jordan 1 in my hands. I got the Jordan 1 Lucky Green. What up fam, so in this video, I am gonna be breaking down this shoe. We'll get into the inspiration behind this colorway. We'll talk about the leather quality, definitely worth talking about with this pair. For those of you interested, we'll get into some resale predictions. And as always, I will be giving you guys that on feet look. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video. Before I begin the video, just wanna say thank you to you guys for all of the feedback on the last video. I just dropped a video talking about the best ways that you can save money when buying sneakers. A lot of really good feedback on that. So appreciate you guys for that if you haven't already watched it i will leave a link in the description a lot of very useful information for you guys so here we have it man the jordan one lucky green these released worldwide october the 15th this was surprisingly a woman's release so of course there were a lot more smaller sizes made than the bigger men's sizes which is pretty surprising because a very clean colorway like this you know it would definitely be popular with the guys as well they're calling these the lucky green i guess you could even call them the celtic green ones i think the best name for the shoe should have been the heineken ones because that's the first thing i think about when i see this shoe a can of heineken the colorway of the shoe was inspired by the 63 point game that michael jordan had against the boston celtics all the way back in 1986 they talked about this game quite a lot in that recent uh, The Last Dance documentary. If you guys haven't already watched that, you definitely should. So this green colorway was inspired by the Boston Celtics. I know we've seen the color green on quite a few Jordan 1s. We had the pine green 1.0s, the 2.0s. We also had, I believe they were called the dark green Jordan 1s. But unless I'm forgetting something, I think this is the first time we've seen the color green on a Jordan 1 in this kind of Chicago color blocking. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. I know we've seen it on a Jordan 1 mid before and a Jordan 1 low, but this is pretty much the first time we've seen it on a Jordan 1 high. Let's start off with the leather quality because the leather quality on this definitely really surprised me. We're getting some really, really nice leather on this. Much better than that previous women's only pair, the satin Jordan 1s. This time the leather is definitely buttery. You can see when I press down on the green portion of the shoe, you can see that nice tumble effect. Also, the white panels of the shoe are done in a pretty nice leather. The feel of the leather too just feels a lot softer than some of the recently released Jordan 1s. We get a patent leather black swoosher. I'm not mad at the color choice. I definitely think black was the right way to go there. I just don't know why they chose patent leather there. I would have much rather preferred real leather. I don't like patent leather on any Jordan 1, on any shoe for that matter. So maybe it's just my own bias, but what do you guys think? Would you have rather preferred regular leather on the swoosh or are you fine with the patent leather? Let me know. The Wings logo here is done in red. I'm not sure what the inspiration there is. I would have definitely preferred a black Wings logo on this. On the back of the sneaker, you have another hit of red. And to me, this kind of looks like the flag of Peru. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that's doing back there. And don't ask me how I know that's the flag of Peru. When I was a child, I was really into flags. You can ask me any country, I'll be able to draw the flag for you. The insole of the sneaker is pretty interesting. It is a basketball cord and it is supposed to resemble the same basketball court of the Boston Celtics home floor back in 1986. The sneakers come standard with these black laces. You also get a pair of green laces as well as red. I definitely think black is the right choice here, especially for that Chicago effect. The midsole of the sneaker is done almost in this off-white color, like a cream color. We've seen Jordan brand do that a lot with the Jordan 1s this year, give it that kind of vintage look. However, this very subtle hit of beige on the midsole here, I think looks really, really nice with this colorway. It goes really well with the green. This is surprisingly over Overall, a very nice shoe the colorway is clean and more so than that the leather quality I think is just great when it comes to sizing it fits like any other Jordan 1 go with your true Nike size I'm always true to size in Jordan 1's this is a woman's release so just make sure that especially if you're buying this sneaker on like a reselling platform like StockX which by the way you can do so the link is in the description just make sure that the size conversion you go a size and a half up in women's and I'm speaking to all the guys specifically so let's say for example you normally 
normally wear a men's size nine, you gotta buy a 10 and a half in women's. Unfortunately, big feet gang like myself, I wear a size 11 in men's. They didn't even bother making this in my size. So pretty much if you are a guy who has bigger than a size 10 and a half, then you're out of luck. They just didn't even make them. Let's move on to resale. But before we do that, if you have been finding this video useful so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button. As you guys can see, 30K feels really, really close. I can't wait to hit that. And there will be definitely a special video dropping when I hit that 30K. And drop a like on the video too. It really helps out the channel. Let's get into resale. As you guys can see right now, resale prices are really, really low for the shoe, which to be honest, I'm not too surprised about. Resale prices in general for most sneakers nowadays are very low, which once again, I'm not very surprised about because I dropped a video back in April and another one in May talking about how the current uh, pandemic situation and the economic situation is gonna drag resale prices lower for the rest of the year. So I'm not really surprised that a lot of releases these days, the resale prices right after the release are pretty low, but I just think that's a good opportunity for the buyers out there. I mean, a colorway like this, just think about it guys, a Chicago color blocking, a green colorway on a Jordan 1. If this dropped last year, what would the resale price be on this pair? I'm willing to bet at least the mid 300. With this particular shoe, I'm not sure exactly what the stock numbers were. I asked you guys on Instagram how many of you got Ws, and it was a pretty high percentage. 25% of you guys said you got a W on the sneaker, which is much higher than usual. And even myself, I don't even have bots or anything. I pretty much just enter raffles and hope for the best. And I managed to hit on multiple pairs of this. I, in total, I managed to get three pairs. So I don't know if I was lucky or if the stock numbers were just high for this pair. But either way, because of how clean this colorway is, I definitely think, especially in the bigger men's sizes, these are just a very good hold. A lot of Jordan 1s this year have not really proven to be good holds. For example, the smoke gray ones, the tie-dye ones. But when you look at some of the more simple, clean colorways, for example, the court purples, the uh, royal toes, these type of colorways have performed really well on the resale market. So it really is a very picky market right now. You can say things like, oh, all Jordan 1s are good investments. All dunks are good investments. It really, really does depend on the shoe and how much hype that particular shoe is. And more importantly, in my opinion, the wearability of the shoe. And I think this colorway, how wearable it is, how clean it is, it definitely, in my opinion, makes for a pretty decent hold if you're willing to hold at least until the springtime next year. If you really wanted the shoe, then A, you must be a Celtics fan, so I'm sorry. And B, well, like I said, this is a buyer's market. It is a great time to buy the shoe, especially at the prices right now. Even the men's sizes are currently selling for under 300. So that is definitely a pretty good price, I think, for the shoe. Final thoughts, are these a cop or a drop? And let me just clarify, this part has nothing to do with resale. This is just about whether I like these shoes, would I keep them for myself, would I rock them? That's what this cop or drop means. And for me, these shoes are not just a drop, these are a mega drop. And the reason for that is simple, man. I am a diehard Toronto Raptors fan, and I absolutely hate the Celtics. If I were to pick one team in the NBA that I hate the most, it would be the Celtics. And there's no way in hell I would wear a shoe that reminded me of the Boston Celtics. Also, secondly, I love green on shoes. Like green, definitely one of my favorite colors on shoes. However, this particular shade of green, now this is what I would call a Kelly green. And in my opinion, Kelly green is like the ugliest of all greens. Now that once again, just my opinion, but I really don't like the shade of green. So that's another reason why I personally wouldn't wear the shoe. But from your average sneakerhead point of view, I gotta say this is definitely a clean colorway. Goes really well with this beige midsole. Quality on this definitely good. So for most of you guys, I would say it's a cop, but for me, definitely a drop. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of the Jordan 1 Lucky Green? Are these a must cop for you? Let me know. Hey, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow me on Instagram. The handle is right here. It is at JDKick6. Definitely the easiest place to contact me. I try my best to respond to every single one of my DMs. So if you wanna contact me, if you wanna get some fit pics, all of that good stuff, make sure you follow me on Instagram. The on-feed portion of the video coming up right now. Thank you guys so much for messing with the channel, messing with the video, all of the support on the channel. Much love to you guys. Until next time, guys. Peace.